get right into the message today. And the message today is uh, healing in the kingdom of God. Healing in the kingdom of God. It's legally paid for. Legally paid for in full. So those of you that have been with us for the past few weeks, even online, um, you'll know that we've been talking about the kingdom of God. And um, we went through some steps, and I was just kind of, we were just kind of refreshing some people's ideas of what they remembered over the last few weeks. But the kingdom of God is that, that it does have a king, and he is God, and God is good all the time. He's a good king, and his laws are good. And we talked about how his kingdom operates in some different degrees, and we, we kind of touch on that every week, and, we're, and we... We actually kind of repeat a little bit each week because it's, I find that it, it, it helps me anyway and helps uh, to kind of get that solid in our, in our minds the way that we want to be able to see what the kingdom of God is and how it's working in our lives every day as we go through. Then we talked about what's faith got to do with it. it reminded me of Tina Turner of all things. Can you imagine? <laughs> um, yeah, her and Ike had a quite a quite a unusual uh, relationship. I'll tell you, I met Ike uh, a couple of times, and uh, was just he's quite an interesting guy. Anyway, um, what's faith got to do with it? And we talked about that. We actually spent two weeks talking about the faith part. Uh, last week we talked about how citizens of the kingdom of God make decisions. Do you remember? We talked about that, and we concluded that making decisions as a, as, a, as a citizen of the kingdom requires us, first of all, to be able to hear God. And we attached that idea of hearing God to the fact that praying in tongues is an extraordinary tool that we get to use in order to communicate with God. And let him speak through us and let us hear his faith as he speaks through us. Hear his faith with our spiritual ears. As he speaks through our heavenly language, we spent a lot of time on tongues last week and we'll probably do it again. It was very well received, except for one guy on YouTube, but that was okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel privileged sometimes when uh, that happens. Because we're getting the word out there, and it's in the church that we really need to have that word go out. It isn't, it isn't, the, the, it isn't the outskirts of the church. It's in the church itself that this, this, this extraordinary tool of praying in tongues is so important. But the first thing we studied regarding the laws of the kingdom is that God is good all the time. We've heard that over and over. It's a wonderful saying that we hear. And, um, and we talked about what the role of jurisdiction plays in the government of the kingdom of God. The, how Adam gave up the, his crown of creation to Satan and he had to give it up because he, Satan had no right to just go in and take it. So he kind of tricked him into setting it down and he picked it up and he now has, he had, then he at that point had the dominion over the earth and still does until we're born again. That's why it's so important to be born again things change. God made a covenant with man and he made, we talked about this, God made a covenant with man and he made that covenant through Abraham so that we would become the children of Abraham as Gentiles. Well, there might be a Jew or two in here, but maybe not. But, you know, any born again person becomes a child of the children of Abraham and partakes in that covenant, partakes in those promises. Um, but, but he had to have that, he had to have a man of faith like Abraham in order to come back into the world and have a lineage to where he could have a son become, to put on the clothing of man, let's put it that way, put on the clothing of humanness so that he could work back and get this, this, um, blessings, the blessings of this, of the spiritual realm that Adam was in before the fall and get it back to us here on earth, here on earth. Um, this week, we're gonna look at the healing laws and how, 
How does healing work in the kingdom of God? And we're, and we're gonna, and again, it'll be somewhat repetitive because those, those, are, those are all the things we've talked about are, are part of receiving your healing and receiving the blessings. But um, healing, physical healing, is a part of your citizenship in the government of God, in his kingdom. Uh, every single topic that, that, or doctrine that we study uh, it, it has to be undergirded with this understanding of spirit, soul, and body. We just always have to be reminded that we have, when we're talking about these things, if we don't understand at least to some degree the doctrine of spirit, soul, and body, it's going to be confusing, it's going to be frustrating, and it'll lead to unbelief. And it'll lead to, it'll lead to just, oh, just throwing your hands up. And... We just, we just don't want that. So we're, we're interjected every once in a while so we just remember that we can't know just God the Father. If we don't know the Holy Spirit and God the Son, we can't just know God the Father. We can't just know two of those persons and say that we know God because they're all one. And in the same way, we have to understand that Trinity essence of ourselves. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Spirit, Soul, and Body we have that same Trinity experience and we have to understand that and we have to be thinking from that standpoint uh, a lot of times or we're going to get confused. So, um, as far as God is concerned, say God, the Godhead or God the Father is concerned, the one thing that we, we really must anchor, we, we have to anchor this foundationally in our hearts is that God is love. And he is a, what the, in, in the Greek, agape love. And the definition of agape love is that he loves everybody and he loves everyone with only thoughts about their good having nothing to do with himself. It has nothing to do with us pleasing him. It's all about us and that's agape love only concerned with the good of another person and not yourself. That's a difficult thing for human beings to do. And I don't know that it's 100% impossible, but it's pretty close, 99.99.99. .99 anyway, you know. Uh, so the first law is according to his will. According to his will, here's the law. God wants you well. We have to know that. That has to be solid in us. And though it sounds like a no-brainer and it sounds like, you know, the old Simpson thing, duh, uh, it, we lose it. We, we, sometimes we still, I mean, maybe not everybody, but people just think about how God, God had something to do with me being sick. God had something to do with my mother or my brother or my sister dying. God had, you know, why did he do that? Why did he allow that? Uh, it's rampant in the body of Christ. That is rampant in the body of Christ. And it's, it's still probably got some little roots kind of hanging out with us and once in a while we get that, we get that, we get that sense of that it's, it, it's all his fault. <laughs> But God wants you well, and he wants you saved. Remember last week I said how the Greek language was such a great language for the New Testament because it has these words that, um, that all different words meaning different things about one thing. So the, the one, another one here we're going we're gonna to see here when we say God wants you saved, um, the word saved is sozo. And... I know many of you have heard this and probably studied it to some degree, but it's another thing that's really important for us to keep going. So I'm going to put the definition on the screen here. And um, would it help if I move out of the way a little bit? But that's fine. fine. Okay. So, uh, well, for, for you guys can't see. Okay, so uh, I'm going to move, and then you'll have to move that camera just a little bit. I want you to see some of these things. See if I got my Wheaties today. <laughs> so 
It's good? All right. Um, so SOZO, the NAS, that's the New American Standard New Testament Greek lexicon, says it this way. It means to save, keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger or destruction, a one from, well, that's not in there, one from injury or peril. That was confusing, so I didn't put it in there, but it, it just means keeping one from injury or peril. To save a suffering one from perishing, for example, one suffering from disease, to make well, to heal, to restore to health, to preserve one who is in danger of destruction, to save or rescue, to save in the technical biblical sense. So it's all about health and healing and restoration of our physical bodies and the biblical sense of being saved. So Strong says to save, and that is to deliver or protect literally or figuratively, figuratively heal, preserve, save, do well, be or make whole. So understanding this word saved and the idea that God wants us well is very, very closely connected. Um, it, it, it really needs to be received. A, a revelation knowledge of this, that God wants you well. And by understanding this word sozo, it can help. It can help us to, to remember that. And to, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit more about it, but it is so foundational because if you don't know that, then what's the point of, well, you'll see what I'm saying. There's right ways to pray and wrong ways to pray. And there's things that, you know, the, the Pharisees prayed. They, they prayed the wrong way. There are wrong ways to pray. And, we're, you know, if we understand that he wants us well, there's a different way of asking for manifestation of a healing process. Because many believe that sometimes he heals and sometimes he doesn't. It just depends on, I don't know, whatever it is. It depends on, I mean, I don't know if it depends on his mood. I wouldn't think that that would be the case in anybody's thoughts, but maybe. Um, but he doesn't. That would mean that sometimes then God wants you sick. Even saying that out loud seems belly, belly, weird. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just, it just feels funny. It just feels off to say that God would want you sick. But if you're saying that, you know, that sometimes he heals and sometimes he doesn't, then that's what you're saying. Because the doesn't, when he doesn't, it means that he wants that person sick. It is his will for that child of his to be sick. I can't, I just can't anymore, can't go there. You know, there was a time when I could and a time when we did. The time that I grew up with all that was, but, but, but again, if, if it's something that you've been taught and if you're out there in, in internet and you're listening to this and, you, and, you, and you're starting to think, wait a minute, you know, I've been taught that and yeah, if it's something that, that you've been taught, we have, to, we have to dig out those roots of that stuff. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna put up on the screen just yet, but do, do, do any of you remember peeling potatoes? and digging out the eyes of the roots of the, of the potato, digging them out. Do any of you remember this thing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I still have one. You still have one? Okay. Ours, ours is all fancy now. We, um, and this is what we have to do. We have to dig, the, dig those little roots out of those of those thoughts, of those feelings, of those, uh, you know, that understanding, because until we do that, the, the full revelation of God wants you well will not seep in. Many are still being taught. I mean, there's four or five churches around, the, right, just within blocks of us, and I can almost guarantee that there's, people are still being taught that God will allow you to be sick for some reason or another, for his glory, to what, whatever. So you're either, you're either, if that's true, then if you're sick, you're either saying, 
Oh, I'm suffering for the Lord. And I'm being facetious or whatever you call this, but I remember as a child, you know, my parents, my, my grandparents, my, you know, the people, the, all the Catholics that were around me, which were a lot, that's how they felt. They were, oh, I'm suffering for the Lord. I'm just offering this up to the Lord. And those roots are deep in that potato, and you, we need to dig them out. But I guarantee you, there's probably, in, within a few blocks radius, this doctrine is being taught still to this day. But Jesus already did all the suffering. It, it, you know, it took me like, you know, 50 some years to get to that point where I could even know that that was a fact, that Jesus did, already did all the suffering. That we could, well, there's nothing more that we can do. He did all the suffering. And yes, it was enough for all of our sins, past, present, future, and, and the consequences of the sin, if we, if we understand the word sozo. If we understand the word sozo, it's for the consequences of sin. It's for the physical restoration of our bodies. Uh, the question is going to come up, well, yeah, well, then why do we die? I'm not addressing that today. We will sometime, but that's a whole other deal. I just don't want to get into it. But yeah, we're destined for death in, in the physical body so that we can get our incorruptible one. But in the meantime, Jesus came for us to have that restoration here on earth right now in the kingdom that he brought so I'm saying that um, that if you're so, and here's another one is that people get sick and then they know that being sick is so that they'll be healed and then they can go around telling everybody that God healed them. That's for his glory. But that he allowed the sickness though so that he could, really, Seriously, I started thinking about that and I started thinking about my kids and I started thinking about, so would I give my kids something to make them sick so that they could come to me and beg me for some medicine, beg me to make them well and I give them some medicine and then they get well and then I tell them, you go around and tell everybody what your dad did. Now, I don't think there's anybody anywhere, internet land or here, that thinks that way. But if there is, you're probably going to end up in prison. You're probably going to go to jail. That's how off that whole thought process is. Nobody would stand for that in this country. But as far as God is concerned, that, that's okay. Our good, good father, our father that's good all the time, but except for when he wants you sick, uh, doesn't, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't ring true. It just doesn't ring true. So God wants you well. That is his will for you. And it's important to understand that he wants you well. It's his will for you and every single person of mankind to be well. I'm going to go through three verses here that, that talk about that. So you can write them down or you can look at them. They're very short. John 3, 17, which comes right after John 3, 16, which is a real famous one. Okay, John 3, 17. And God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be sozoed might be saved. John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, sozoed, and shall go in and out and find pasture. So he's talking about on this earth. He's not talking about when we get to heaven. What a day that will be. It will be. But we want those days down here, and that's what he came for. He said right here, because it will come in and out, and they will find pasture. And then Acts 2.21, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, sozoed. Whosoever. 
The second law that we're going to talk about is, I don't know, and this might be a little tomology. I couldn't find the law of belief anywhere, but I'm calling it that. The law of belief is believe. Only believe and you will be free. And then there's a law of liberty, and that's being free because you believe. So Mark 9, 23, and the King James says, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him who believes. In Mark eleven twenty four, this is kind of the core verse of this, of this uh, message here. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. There is so much there that, you know, we, we could spend a lot of time on that. We, we, we're gonna spend a little bit, but you notice in this verse, um, in, in 11.24, Jesus doesn't use the word ask. He doesn't say whatever you ask. Because he already knows and he's put into our hearts if, we've, if, we, um, if we diligently seek him, he puts into our hearts what we desire. So he doesn't even use the word ask here. He just says, whatever your heart desires, believe it, if you diligently seek me, and you will have it. That's so good. That's just so good. So we're gonna we're gonna look at the word ask. I don't know if any of you remember uh, that uh, I looked it up and it came up in our Bible study. I said I was gonna look up the word ask. Do you remember that? Those those were that were there a couple of weeks ago. I did. And I found out that I had done a whole teaching on it in, in, in uh, January of 2020, last year. And it's a wonderful teaching. And I, I just, it had kind of left my mind. But it's, the word ask is in the Greek is uh, ahiteo. And ahiteo, in, in the biblical, in the, in, the, in the New Testament, there's different words for ask, a lot of different words for ask in the Greek. But in ahiteo means um, it's related to prayer usually, and it means ask or desire. And it means to ask of somebody in authority, that, that is in authority, that's made a promise that if certain requirements were met, that you would receive something. So you're already asking for something that you've already done the requirements to receive. And it also includes, in this Greek word, it includes an intensity, it includes a focus. It is not, a, it is absolutely, actually the opposite of arrogant. It is a polite, uh, gentle, loving way of demanding that because the requirements have been met, I, I, I'm asking for that, for that. So it's kind of like your boss says you can have Friday off if you get some reports in by Thursday noon. So at 11.30, boom, you go in, you lay down the reports and you say, okay, I want, I want to make sure we're, I'm on my four day weekend tomorrow. You know, and you don't, you don't yell. I think I talked a little bit about this last week, but again, we need, to, we need to repeat it. This is a big deal. When you read the Bible and you see this word ask, we gotta start thinking about it in that way because even though I did this teaching a year ago, I still found myself not really thinking about that word ask, but now, as I go through and I read different scriptures and I see that word ask, I look and see if it's Aiteo or if it's something else because it's, it, it, it changes the personality of that, of that scripture. So another good example is um, God says, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that you'll be saved, that Jesus died on the cross, rose from the dead for your sins and you'll be saved. That's the other good example. That moment, we talked about that last week or sometime, that moment of you asking for something that the requirement has been done, the requirement 
from the person in authority, that would be God, and he said, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that he died on the cross and rose from the dead for your sins, you shall be saved from death and destruction. Okay, I did that. So this isn't any more just like, oh, please, it isn't. It is that moment you hear faith just coming up inside you. You hear that faith, and that faith is the one that we attach to. We try to use that same perspective of faith. There's nobody, I mentioned last week, nobody's gonna talk me out of the faith of that moment. And I think you all feel the same way, that you're born again. That the faith of that moment is, is something that nobody can talk you out of. And you, and you somehow have a heavenly spiritual sense of what that faith is, though you may not be able to speak it out in English or whatever language you speak, but you have a sense of what that faith is. And that's the faith that we need to attach to everything that we do in our lives and get in a habit of doing that. Um, I get lost in my notes here. Uh, let's see. Ephesians uh, 1, 3, chapter 1, verse 3 says, Blessed be the God of our Father, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. 1 John 4, 17 says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. He's saying right there that he want, God wants us to be like him. Perfect. Complete. And understanding these two or three principles that we've just talked about take us a long way to, to being able to do, to do that because he says, and we're gonna go through some scriptures in a minute, that we are kings and priests. Once we're born again, we become ambassadors and kings and priests and citizens and I mean, just the whole realm of all of those offices in that kingdom. He says we are. We're, we're kings and priests and citizens of the country of heaven. the kingdom of God, the government of God. We are kings and priests and citizens. We are partakers of the promises, the covenant God made with Abraham because of that. The woman with the issue of blood, she was told by Jesus, your daughter, you are a daughter of Abraham. You, just, you have the, every legal right to this healing that you sought. And he didn't, he didn't, know anything that she was, you know, he didn't, he didn't talk to her before that. He didn't even know. He felt, the, he, he felt the healing go out of him and into her. He didn't even know she was there. But he knew she was a daughter right away. So she had that legal right, and so do we. So 1 Peter 2, 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that's all what we are. <laughs> a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. This is, there, this is such a great revelation here because these are the two kingdoms that exist here on this planet, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. And we all get to participate in the kingdom of darkness from day one. And darkness, I wish I could spend some time asking what everybody thought about darkness and what, your, what comes to your mind when you think about darkness. But as I studied it out a little bit and looked at some different things, um, my, my view of darkness, I mean, I even looked up the scientific definition of darkness and it just meant the absence of light and they actually had some kind of big long words that darkness was made up of and whatever. You know, I mean, that, that's all cool and that's good and it's, it's neat. 
But what I found is that darkness means that you are ignorant. You can't, you can't know things. If it's dark, you can't know that this music stand is, is right here. You're ignorant of that fact if it's dark. But as soon as light is shed on it, you, you have that knowledge. Those are the two kingdoms that we're dealing with here, the kingdom of darkness, which is ignorance, and the kingdom of light, which is knowledge. We all get to be part of that ignorant kingdom from day one when we're born, thanks to Adam and Eve and Satan. But do you see? We're all in that kingdom of darkness until... We get that hearing, that faith come up by the grace of God, hearing that faith come up and we are born again. And Jesus comes to take us into the kingdom of light. And he says, look, here's the light. Wow, what's going on here? Here's the light. You say, what's going, wow, this is awesome. I know that every single person that's born again has some sense of this change in their, in their being. You know, it's all different for everybody, I'm sure. But there's a change. And if there isn't, then it's time to investigate that. If you think you're born again and you've looked and you, and you, and you haven't noticed a change, and then you need to investigate that and look into it because the light will shine. And when the light shines, you see something with your spiritual eyes, especially. Some people even see things with their physical eyes. But there's two different kinds. The kingdom of light causes knowledge. So Jesus, so Jesus' whole purpose for coming to this world was what, I'll ask? Preach the kingdom, exactly. Preach the kingdom, exactly. That was his, that was his ultimate purpose, destroying the works of the devil, dying on the cross, all of those other things were the means to get to preach the kingdom of, of heaven. That was his whole purpose. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Luke um, 4, 43 says, but he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also because for this purpose I have been sent. Now I've been teaching lately that his purpose was to give us life and give us life more abundantly. That's what I've always been saying. But, but this, that, that's kind of a result of, of what his purpose really is, and that is preaching the kingdom of God, which is what we're doing. So Luke 12, 32 says, Do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom of Matthew 25, 34 says, then the king will say to those on his right hand, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. And underlined there is, hopefully is from the foundation of the world. This wasn't an afterthought. He didn't just figure this out later. From the foundation of the world, Jesus was was relegated to come to earth to preach the kingdom of God because God knew all this stuff was going to happen. So he, he had him all set up to do that. The death of Jesus is not what the Jews were waiting for. The Jews weren't waiting for someone to come and die. That wasn't what they were looking forward to. They were looking forward to a kingdom. They were looking forward to a physical kingdom of, you know, kill, overcoming the Romans and just and being... You know, that's what they were looking forward to. They were looking for that Messiah to come, but they weren't looking for him to die on a cross. That wasn't his purpose. But he, but he came back. He brought back the kingdom of God for us to have our inheritance that Adam gave up. The dominion over the earth. We now have dominion over the earth again. He calls us a priest he calls us a country here in Revelation 1.6. It says, And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 
He made us kings and priests, Revelation 5.10, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. We are to have dominion, we are to reign on the earth, and if you don't have spirit, soul, and body completely revealed to you in a way that is solid, um, you, you could just believe this, and then maybe that revelation will come. You could just believe this, because it is the Word of God, but if you don't quite get the whole spirit, soul, and body thing, just believe this, and it will start to come to you. But keep looking into the Word of God and renewing that wonderful mind that He gave you. Because we all have wonderful minds, even in the darkness, if you can imagine. Even when we're in the darkness, we have great minds that we, that, uh, that we get to use. But it's in our spirits that we have this dominion that we're talking about. We can direct our thoughts, if we can direct our thoughts away from the darkness uh, of the world, if we can direct our thoughts, our thinking, if we can get, start thinking more correctly and th direct our thoughts away from the darkness of the world, away from the ignorance that the world is made of, then we can provide for our healing. And, you know, we've been doing a lot of praying lately, it seems like. Um, you know, just a lot. As a church, we've been praying a lot. Um, Dixie and I, we've been praying together a lot. I've been praying a lot on text and phone, on the phone and Zoom and all kinds of different places. You know, and sometimes we see the healing manifest, because usually we're praying for healing. I mean, really. You think about it, that's when people ask you to pray, is when there's something really bad wrong with them. That, you know, hardly ever does somebody come up and say, hey, uh, here's a praise report, let's give praise to God, hallelujah. <laughs> no, that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Mostly people come and they pray. We lost another, uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, but sometimes uh, we've seen a healing manifestation uh, praise God. Uh, some, some manifestations are in process. We know that people are getting better. And we're standing and agreeing with those people and those brothers and sisters. Um, and some we have prayed for and they've gone to be with Jesus. So I don't know which one of those is the best scenario, honestly. Being with Jesus is pretty awesome and you're healed once you get to Jesus, you're healed. So we, we, we can look at it, we can look at it like that. But the main reason I wanted to, get, to do this message today in the kingdom of heaven, in the kingdom of God and healing in the kingdom of God was for encouragement uh, and to not, to not be afraid and to not be discouraged. Because these days, it's just so easy. It's just so easy to fall into discouragement and fall into being afraid and fall into even being sick because discouragement and being afraid, fear and discouragement cause sickness. They really do, physical sickness. We just need to know that God is good all the time and his kingdom is only good. There's only good that comes from his kingdom. It's just like we talked about his language is the language of faith. That's what he speaks back to us in. And if we're not in tune with his language, we're, we're gonna miss some stuff. And when we're discouraged and fearful, we're more likely to not be hearing in faith and speaking in faith. So we have to think correctly. What we see, what we hear, who we listen to with intent, all of those things are, uh, affect our bodies. They affect our bodies and, and what's on the inside. And what, what I'm talking about is, you know, that fear, death, and destruction is a part of the world we live in. It's just part of it. I mean, uh, I was gonna mention a minute ago, I just saw this morning, um, one of my school schoolmates of ministry school passed away today. Uh, sounds like from COVID too. And, and so we're seeing a lot of death and destruction. You know, we're just we're seeing that it's 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 in our it's in our realm. It's it's happening. And and so it's easy to get discouraged. It's easy to get fearful. 
you know, and somebody close to you like that, uh, I mean, it's not that close, but, but we were friends. I mean, he, you know, he was an IT guy and he really helped me out a lot when I was running at the Bible college. So it's important that we choose what we listen to, what we see, what we hear, who we, who we connect with, who, 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 we're, who we hang out with. Um, I found myself watching a Denzel Washington movie. Isn't that his name, Denzel Washington? So I, I watched it, and I watched it all the way through. Dixie wouldn't, wouldn't watch it, but I watched it. And when I come across this idea, I thought, I don't, I mean, I, I didn't count them, but there were just numerous murders and beatings and physical abuse and but the storyline was so good. I just just wanted to push through all that, and I did. But you know what? That affected my body, I'm sure. Somewhere, some way, it affected the, 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 the cells of my body. Maybe the T cells, maybe the B cells. I don't know, but it affected it somewhere because you take that stuff in, and it's not something that you're gonna, you walk away and you go, oh, man, those T cells are hurting. You, you don't know that. It just, it just does. Um, I haven't watched a lot of those kinds of movies over the fa recent few years, but I, I did push myself through this one. But Dixie and I love to watch mystery movies, and we found some really good ones. And there isn't graphic violence and, you know, um, because even though we, we do watch those, we still, we, we watch a lot of Christian movies. We watch, watch a lot of faith-based movies. We watch a lot of teachers, Christian teachers and different, different perspectives and that kind of thing. So we spend a lot of time there, but um, it, if, it, it's, it's really important to narrow that down if we wanna be healed because God wants us well. But if we're not going to do the things that we need to do to keep us healed, he still wants us well, but he gave us free will. So we have to make sure that we're, we're thinking right. Um, we need to feed on the word of God more, to feed on the doctrines that follow the truth that enhance our knowledge of him, those doctrines that enhance our knowledge of him. Um, the next thing we need to do, because God wants us well, is we need to ask him. Now this ask is a little different. This ask is, ask him if we're the problem and if he'll shed some light on that. If he'll open up the kingdom of light on that, how much of this is me? Am I eating the wrong things? and maybe too much of the wrong things? Am I not getting enough rest? Am I not getting six to eight hours of sleep every night? Because both of those things affect your body in a negative, negative way. And especially as we get older. You would never have been able to tell me that when I was 30 years old. No way. I had so much energy and I ate whatever I wanted to eat and as much of it as I wanted to eat and it didn't bother me one bit. I mean, I wasn't within somewhat reason. I mean, I, you know, but you know what I'm saying? As we get older, we need to focus on those things a little bit more because our bodies don't react in the same way. Or maybe there's um, sin or unforgiveness in our lives. Maybe we... Maybe we need to ask God, shine some light on any unforgiveness or sin that I st may still not be quite aware enough to do something about. And he will do it, especially if we've practiced those things that we've talked about over the last few months, really, of how, how to hear God. If you've got that down, if you've got a little bit of that uh, process down of how you talk to God in your, in your quiet space, He'll answer you, and, and guess what? You're gonna get the most absolutely kind, loving, thoughtful, and accurate answer you get from anybody. God will answer you in a way that you'll be able to deal with the answer. 
Don't ask me, because I'll tell you the truth, but no, you can ask me. But you know what I'm saying? You have to trust who you're gonna to talk to about these things, but it's important, I think, to talk to people about this. It's important for Christians to talk to other Christians about these things. You know, we can read healing scriptures, we can write them down, we can put cards around our house and read them from time to time during the day. And if you're going to a doctor, listen to the doctor, respect the doctor uh, and their profession, but don't forget to ask God before you completely receive the prophecy, any prophecy they give you of your health in, in any kind of a diagnosis. Don't forget to ask God about it. He'll tell you. The reason I bring this up, and I, I know this is being recorded, but you know, I, I watched Barry Bennett twice now and since he's been through what he's been through. And I, I get what he's saying. You know, he's a healer. He, he's written books on healing. And he's written books on hearing God. And there was a procedure that was only three years old that saved his life with his, what he was going through. So, but you know what? He heard from God at the very beginning, you're gonna make, this through, you're gonna make it through this. He heard that. Hearing God is the most important thing. Knowing that he wants you well is the most important thing. So as he went through that, I recommend you guys go, go, go to the healing school. A couple of few months ago, Barry Bennett doing the healing school when he first got back, back, back to work. And then, um, and then recently he just did a, did a Zoom meeting for the army and it was awesome. And, and go, go look at it because it really it, it gives you a, 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 a great perspective of what we're t saying here that healing in the kingdom of God starts with knowing the spirit, soul, and body, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, knowing that unity that we have and then knowing that God wants you well and then hearing him and he'll give you the answers. He's answering me about eating and those kind of things. I'm talking to him about that and he's answering me. Um, I'm just laying, I'm just being transparent here about that. I'm just just saying that that you can do that, and he'll 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 do it for you. I want to I want to end this with um, a, a short testimony about a meeting that I had recently, actually last Friday, on Friday. Uh, it was with a, a couple, a pastor and his wife from Washington. Um, they're the uh, area advocates for Washington State, and I met with them for the Army and Andrew Womack's um, ministry, Army organization. And so we had coffee. Dixie wasn't able to go. She was helping somebody move. But um, I asked him if it would be okay if I shared this testimony because it was so, so real and so sincere and so awesome. Um, they told me of a man who, I, 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 I might get some of this stuff wrong, but it, it doesn't matter too much. They, they told me of a man who hadn't been to church in years, as I recall, years and years and years and years, had not been to church. And he was, they, they said he was kind of like a, he was an 80-year-old biker hippie kind of guy, kind of a rough character who had had a lot of stuff in his life. And he had full-blown Parkinson's. And, and, and he told me that, I mean, to the point where he, he had no control, his, he, he would flail sometimes, and he had no control. But for some reason, I don't recall the, the details, and, and, and those don't matter either, because some, somehow somebody asked him to come to church for something else, not to be in church, but to do something. I don't know what it was, I can't recall. But he did, and they were very surprised that he said yes, and he did show up, and when he got there, you know, he was, had this Parkinson's and somebody else came up and asked him if it would be okay if they prayed for him and surprisingly to everybody, he said yes. And so they all gathered around him and this is how they explained it to me. Before they even prayed, his body just went like this. Everything stopped. This was weeks ago. And they, I, I think they said they just saw him yesterday. He's just, he's fine. 
he comes to church. Uh, church starts at 10. He gets there at 6 or 7 in the morning, waiting, want to help, get moving around. He dances down the aisles. <laughs> and this was before they even prayed for him. God wants you well. God wants you well. Okay, so what's really cool about this is that um, I've asked them to come and minister here on a Sunday, and they said they would. So we're gonna um, we're setting that up. I just I mean this was last night um, that I talked to him on the phone or I texted with him. So you never know what's in a person's spirit. You don't know this this old man. Somebody asked them to come to church for some reason, as I recall. They'll give you the details and then you guys can. But you don't know. You just have to ask. You just have to be be willing to put yourself out there and ask. And you know some some you get, some you don't. And this one did, and it was such an awesome, sincere, genuine testimony from these two that um, I just, I, I think we're gonna be really good friends. Dixie hasn't had a chance to meet them yet, but I, I, I believe we're gonna be really good friends in the, in the future. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll get to meet them pretty soon. Uh, so I want to, I don't want to, but I want to let you all go. <laughs> I, I really like to. We, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna pray for everybody, and then we'll 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 close off the the live stream. But uh, Father, I just I just thank you, Lord. Um, I thank you for uh, thank you for hearing me and letting me hear you, Lord. Uh, I thank you that. Uh, the people that are these these brothers and sisters here and online that are listening to this understand about hearing you and how hearing you is so important in knowing that you want them well that you 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 want everything to do with their goodness with the goodness that happens to them the things that happen father we just thank you that you have nothing but good in your mind for us there is no evil in your mind for us. You are not leading us into temptation ever. You are only have good in your mind for us. And Lord, we thank you for that. And we model that as best as we can every day by communicating with you and staying in prayer, Lord. Thank you so much for commanding us to pray. In Jesus' mighty name, I, I just... Bless and speak to the families of people that are losing loved ones in this recent past that they would have the peace of God over them and that they would know that that um, there's a there's just God all all, all good all things are, are are good are led to good from from God for those who love Him and are called to His purpose and Father God we just we just thank you for that wonderful law. We thank you for that law. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask these things. Amen.